Hello, everybody. My name is Priscilla Parodi, and I am a developer advocate at Elastic. Today, we are going to talk about semantic search. So vector search with text, basically, with the natural language understanding. And before we get started, let's see what is vector search in the end. So basically, it's search based on vector representations, the embeddings. So you have the documents, you generate the embeddings, and then you can perform vector search to find the top k number of nearest neighbors. So this is the conceptual architecture here. Uh, basically, you have your documents. In this case, again, I'm talking about uh, semantics, so text. So you have the vector representations of these texts, and then you have the vector representation of the query, the vectorized query. And then by having both, you are able to perform vector search and find this top k number. So the important point here is the semantics, right? To have meaningful representations. So in order to have these meaningful representations, you would need to generate these embeddings. And then you can do this with Elastic, uh, and it is generated by applying a NLP model, more specifically a transformers-based model. So what you can do with Elastic is uh, you have two options. You can import your proprietary model. So if you have one, you can do this. Otherwise, you can go to Hug and Face, it's an open repository, and then you can navigate here and select the model that you want to use. And then you import this into Elasticsearch with Elan. You probably did it yesterday in the, with the other uh, video. And then you choose here for this one, we are using the task type text embedding. So it's different from the, from the others that you saw yesterday. And then once it's here, you will just deploy uh, the model and start it there. So basically, what you just saw is the inference, the, the embeddings being generated inside Elasticsearch. Another alternative here is to do this outside Elasticsearch. Then in this case, you just come up with the vectors itself. So you don't need to do this with Elastic if you don't want to. Um, so we have Elastic supports two methods here for KNN, the approximate and the brute force. Um, in this session, we'll cover approximate because it offers lower latency, then it makes sense for main user cases. So let me open here the notebook. So it's a Python notebook here. So as you saw yesterday, like the here I am importing a model, more specifically the text embedding model. So we'll skip this part about importing a model and about about, about eland, and we'll focus on the reindex here. So I am creating a new index. So we, we are using from this series the bytes discuss index. And what I did here is I created another index, this dense index, because in the end, we are searching here for dense vector representations. And then what I did here is I added the dense vector type. So basically here, we are storing the predicted value. We'll see this in a field in the Genius pipeline. But then by having this value, I will store this into Elasticsearch as a dense vector. I am using this model that I imported earlier. So there are many details here about the models and it includes the dimensionality. So that's why it's 768 here, 768. And that's why I'm using this. Uh, similarly, the same, there are many different options here. So for this, I chose doc product. Um, in the documentation, you can see that there are even like recommendations in terms of models, but you can see on Hugging Face that you have a lot of options. And depending on your use case, you will uh, need different kinds of model or you need to fine tune your model. So it really is up to uh, your use case or what you're trying to accomplish with it. And, uh, and basically the goal with it is to have the understanding of semantics, the intention, the context, and all of it. So compared to, for example, what you saw earlier uh, when we were talking about BM25, 
uh, the difference here is that it's not exactly like the exact match or a literal match. This is not the point. So in the end, what you will have, in fact, are real vectors, as you can see here. So the vectors will be stored directly. So you won't have like a list of tokens, for example, or nothing like this. And then going back here, let's talk about the inference here. So basically we have an inject pipeline with a inference processor. So this one is used for ML models. And then we'll use this uh, ingest pipeline as part of the re-index. So basically, this is the model ID. So when we imported the model into Elasticsearch, it generated this ID. Um, here it is. Trained models. So this ID. And then going back here, the target field is this one. I, I, you can choose the name that you want. So title uh, vector. So this will be the target field for the inference results. And then the field map here. So basically this text field here is what the model is expecting. And the title is the field that I chose to use. You can use another one if you, if you use the same data set, for example. Uh, or choose the field that makes sense. Uh, it's a text field in this case. So, and this is what the model is expected, uh, is expecting. So basically, after creating this model, the response here, so it was created, I can re-index this using this pipeline. So this will be, as we saw earlier with the mapping we did. So basically this is the new index. So now we have finally a index with the, with the type that we want, with the dense vector type. So here we can start performing the search. So basically, this is the KNN search, and this is the field that we want to perform the search. So this one is title vector dot predicted value, the one that we created. And then here we have K, which is the top K that I've been talking about, which is basically, as mentioned, the number of nearest neighbors to hit return here as hits, and then the number of candidates here. Uh, we have, if I'm not wrong, around 26,000 documents, so we have a lot. Um, here you can choose the number that you want, and it's a trade-off, I would say, between accuracy and performance, and here it goes. But here is the number of neighbors, uh, the candidates that would be considered per shard. So put the number that makes sense. You can try and see what works for you. There are many different papers talking about uh, the best K for you to choose. So there, there are many options here. Again, I just chose one that works here, but you can... Uh, try to understand what makes sense here. If you're analyzing a lot of candidates, if you have a lot of Ks here, then um, it will probably uh, be something that you probably uh, have like a trade-off between accuracy, performance, etc. So it's good for you to take this into account too. And then this is the query vector builder. So you remember when we saw the architecture there that I mentioned that you can generate the embeddings into Elasticsearch. So one side is you generate the embeddings as I did previously. Uh, and then uh, for the documents, like the ones, the other index that you saw. And then the other thing that we also need is the vectorized query. So we can do this through the search requests. So for the same search request here, uh, you don't need to pass directly like vectors. You don't need, you can just pass the text as is. So you just populate this. Uh, part here, the model text, and then this is the model ID, the same, uh, that will be used to generate the embedding in the end. So when I execute this, and I'm using this, I don't know how to use ingest pipelines, for example. I'm not even asking, it's just a statement here. You can see the score that I printed, and then uh, the title. So 
these are the heats. Here, I chose, uh, I am using size six, but in the end, it is actually performing the search for 26K here, uh, top K. So if you put like 26 in the end, you'll be able to see like 26, I'm not counting here, but it will have more and more and, uh, and you'll be able to see like, anyways, it's based on the size for the search API. So you can do this for what makes sense here. But in this case, um, you will anyways, like it doesn't really change the fact that you chose a K. So it will work for, it will execute it for the number of the K you have here. Um, that's it basically for, for this one. I'm not comparing uh, the, the models right now, like one versus the other, but we will have in fact, uh, another session about another uh, model for semantics, which is nice. And also another one about hybrid search, which is all probably like a good one for you to watch if you're interested. And if you want to compare like and see what works best or even to see how these models are complementary. Thanks for your time today and uh, see you.